All right, we're going to go ahead and unbox, set up, and show you how to operate your, your new Hummingbird ozone generator. Let's go ahead and go through the pieces one by one here. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that you have a, a manual with a flash drive. The flash drive has setup instructions, uh, yeah, videos on it, um, so that will be helpful. Of course, you've got your ozone generator, oxygen tubing, a power cord, a hydrophobic valve, and your oxygen tank and regulator. One note, you can use a medical oxygen tank as you see here. Uh, if you do that, you'll need a prescription from a veterinarian or a doctor to get oxygen. The other op uh, option is to use an industrial oxygen tank, which does not require a prescription. They both use the same oxygen, it's just that the medical tanks are validated more stringently as far as the purities goes. So um, if you choose an industrial tank, it will not fit in the kit. Uh, it will come separately and it will have a different regulator that fits the industrial tank. We cannot ship the tanks with oxygen, so keep that in mind when you receive it. It will be empty and you will need to find a local oxygen supply company to fill that. Uh, for our purposes here, this tank is full of oxygen. So when this comes, you'll want to make sure um, that your, your regulator has the little uh, washer that has the rubber piece in here uh, so that it doesn't leak oxygen when you slide it over the stem of the oxygen tank and onto the tank. You'll go ahead and tighten that down here. And you want to snug it up real good and tight. Make sure you don't leak any oxygen. Uh, so that's all ready to go. So we'll go ahead and set that off to the side for a moment. Uh, now, with our generator, really it's very, very simple. We're going to get our power cord and we're going to plug that in to the uh, power inlet on our generator and plug it into an outlet. You'll notice the red butt, uh, LED lights up in the front of the device to let us know that there's power running to it. Next step, these steps can be done in whatever order you desire, is to take our tubing, oxygen tubing. You'll notice we have quite a good amount, four to five feet of tubing, we really only need enough to run from our O2 inlet on our generator, and we're gonna push that on, to the barb connection on our regulator. So we could cut it down to, let's say, about this size. Um, we send it with plenty of tubing, just in case you want to put your oxygen tank somewhere else uh, that's not by your generator. Um, you can just take a pair of scissors and snip it wherever you desire though. So now we're, we're hooked up. We've got our, our oxygen ready to run from our regulator to our generator. Let me explain this. This is if we're going to be ozonating any fluids. Uh, if we are going to do that, what we're gonna wanna do is make sure that we connect this hydrophobic valve. If by chance any fluids were to siphon back towards our generator, the hydrophobic valve will shut completely and not allow fluids to enter. That's what this is for. We don't really need to use it unless we're ozonating a fluid. So that's what, what that is. Um, now, to create ozone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first open the top valve on my oxygen tank. And you'll notice when I do that, that my gauge needle will pop up to show me how much oxygen is in my tank. I really only need to open it about a half turn. Um, and I've got about 1,000 PSI, a little bit less than that in my tank. Um, on the end of our regulator is a, a knob, a dial here, and this allows us to set the speed of flow of oxygen. 
so that when we run it into our generator, it runs at anywhere between a 32nd of a liter per minute and three quarters of a liter per minute. Those are the, the primary flow rates that we'll use. As you can see, the slower the flow rate, the higher the concentration will have. So at a 32nd of a liter per minute, on this particular generator, these will vary slightly, um, batch by batch, but this one is 84, and then uh, the 16th of a liter is 79, an eighth of a liter is 54, quarter is 33, a half of a liter per minute is 13, and three quarters of a liter per minute will give us nine micrograms per milliliter. And this is the concentration on this side. So, so we've got everything set up, um, and now we're ready to produce ozone. What I'm going to do actually is bring a syringe in, um, but if, if I have no destruct or any other components here, what I'm going to do to begin is to turn my oxygen on to the correct setting. At this point, it's going to be a quarter of a liter per minute. Since I have so much tubing, I'm going to wait for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then I'm going to turn my generator on. When I turn my generator on, I'll be producing ozone, so I don't want it to be just coming out into the air. I want to make sure that I capture it in the syringe. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow that oxygen to, to purge the entire line and get into my generator. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit the power button and then attach my syringe immediately. Now, my syringe will begin to fill. You'll see the plunger going up as it fills. When it gets to where I need it to be, I'm simply going to turn my oxygen off. Then I'm going to turn my generator off. Then I'm going to remove my syringe and go use it. Now I'm going to show you an alternate setup uh, that will require the purchase of a few more components uh, to be able to, to do this, but we're going to bring in three more pieces. One is just a, a tube for ozone. The second thing we're going to have here is a three-way stopcock. This might be various colors. Um, and then the third thing will be our destruct. This neutralizes any excess ozone so that, and turns it back to oxygen so that we don't breathe it. So this alternate setup will look like this. Basically, I'm going to connect my stopcock to the top of the generator. And then I'm going to connect this tube to the side port. I'm going to connect this to the destruct, and that's nice and tight. So basically what I can do now is I can make sure that I don't get ozone into the air. Um, this valve is turned off to the syringe port right now. It's pointing up. Um, if I want to turn it off to the destruct so that I get ozone out here, I'm just going to turn it off here. Um, and if I want to get rid of some excess ozone, I really just need to turn my oxygen off first. I'm going to do that here. And I can turn this key off to the generator, which would be pointing down. And then I can take my syringe, put it on here, and push my ozone through the destruct and out. I'm actually going to grab a syringe here. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate uh, this. So I've got my ozone generator running. I've got my oxygen running to it. Um, I've got my valve turned off to the syringe. So if I connect my syringe here, screw that on, it will not fill until I take this and turn it off to the destruct. At that point in time, my syringe will begin to fill. And you can see the plunger slowly moving upwards. You don't want to pull the plunger. Um, unless it's a new syringe, then you want to go ahead and loosen it up a little bit before you put it on. But you don't want to pull the plunger up um, because that will, that will not allow it to fill correctly. You want it to force it up by itself. Um, so once I've got what I need, I can actually turn my ozone off to the syringe. I can turn my oxygen off. That's something I always want to do so I don't lose my oxygen. I can turn my generator off. And I can take my syringe and go use it or the bag if I'm filling a bag or, or whatever I have there. So, so that's how that works.